Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna make a multiplayer game. So let's get started. First, we need a photon fusion. After we add to my assets. It's supposed to pop out inside the package manager. Like this, then you're gonna download it. After you download it, you have to import the package. After you import it, this is gonna pop out. It's gonna require you to enter your Fusion app ID. So to enter that, you have to go to Photon Fusion website. Okay, I reload the page, so you have to click on sign up. After you sign up, you're gonna click on create a new app. It's gonna be Fusion. Uh, we're gonna choose Fusion 2. Your application name whatever you want and you don't need to enter anything to description neither url the final step will be to click on create button but i'm not going to create anything because actually i have three applications i don't need that because it's real time i'm going to use this one which is youtube multiplayer video and i'm going to copy this id and then I'm gonna go to Unity and then I'm gonna paste the ID in here. Now we can see the check mark and that means it accepted our ID. All right guys, then we're gonna right click on the hierarchy, then Fusion Scene and we're gonna click on Setup Networking in the scene. So we got two guys in here, Prototype Network Start and Prototype Runner. Also, I actually need a ground. I'm gonna add plane so our player can move on it. And now let's add a capsule and I'm gonna use that as a player. So let's make our ground bigger. It's too small for our player to move on it. Let's click on our player and I'm going to add multiple components. The first thing will be character controller. We're going to use that to move our character. Then we need network object component. Then we need network transform. Okay guys, we need these components to move our player inside of the server. Yeah, and there's a one warning that this object hasn't baked yet. Save the scene or enter play mode. So if it hasn't baked yet, we should bake it. We're gonna click on fusion scene and bake scene objects. And let's go back to player and as you can see, we don't see a warning anymore. Okay, that's all. So let's go to Prototype Runner and add a new component. I'm going to call this Player Spawner and create an add script. Okay guys, we don't need system collections, neither system collections generic libraries. Instead, I'm going to use Fusion library. And it's not going to be mana behavior, it's gonna be another behavior which is simulation behavior. And we don't need this too, so let's get our player prefab. Then we need a function, I'm gonna call that player joined and there will be one argument player ref. And we need also I player joined because we're gonna check if someone enters the server. So how we can check that? So I'm gonna write a if statement. If runner local player is equal to player
then spawn player prefab I'm going to write a position and quaternion identity for rotation. So whatever rotation of prefab is, it's going to be the same when we spawn it. Let's save the project and go back to Unity. To make a player prefab, I'm dragging player object to assets and I am deleting player object from the hierarchy. Now I'm dragging player prefab to here. After saving the project, I'm clicking on the play. Now we see this thing and what we should do to click on start shared client. We join the server and our player prefab spawn in the scene, perfect. However, our player cannot do anything. Let's add some movements to our player. So what I'm gonna do to add a components and I'm gonna call our script player movements. In here, we're gonna use network behavior. All right, let's get our character controller. So I'm gonna call this CH instead of long character controller. I'm gonna create speed variable. And let's get our character controller from start function. We're gonna delete that and instead we're gonna use fixed update network function. Now, as usual, we need horizontal and vertical inputs. So let's write here a vector 3 movements. You can call move or whatever you want it. We're gonna add horizontal input for the x axis. There won't be anything for y, and we're gonna add vertical input for the z axis. And we're gonna multiply that player speed and not time dot delta time but runner dot delta time. Now let's apply this to our character controller. We are almost done, but we need one more if statement. If movement is not equal to vector three dot zero, that means if our player doesn't stop then transform that forward is equal to movement perfect let's save the script and go back to unity let's click on play and see what happens
Okay, there are some errors happened. Let's go to project. I'm gonna click on player and I'm gonna set a speed for our player. I want to do three. Actually, the main reason why it gives an error, strangely, because it doesn't get character control from start method. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete start method and our character controller will be serialized field. Let's wait for Unit to compile this code. Now we have to drag and drop our character controller to this input field. And after that, when I click on to play, it works, as you can see. That's cool, we wrote everything for our player to move, but we didn't check that state authority is true. So, when it's not gonna be true, we won't return nothing. So it basically makes sure that people who join the server only can affect their player, not other players. Okay, now our player can move and let's add some extra movement controls to our player. For example, I'm going to add jumping system. To make a jump, of course, we need jump force. We need also gravity, which is approximately negative 8.91 flow. We also need vector 3 velocity. Now let's add an if statement which is gonna check that we are on the ground or not by using character controller. If you are on the ground then velocity is y axis is equal to negative 1. Next thing we will do to add value to our velocity It's gonna be plus equal to gravity multiply runner dot delta time And it must be y and Another thing we're gonna add is boolean and Actually, it doesn't need to be public. And let's call this can jump. Or I'm gonna just call it jumping. Whatever. And actually, guys, we can use update function for that. There is no harm. So I'm gonna check that if you press on the space key, then jumping boolean is equal to true. And inside of fixed update network method, I'm gonna write if we are jumping and if we are on the ground too. Then we'll ask to y plus equal to jump force. Lastly, there's missing something for character movements. We're gonna add velocity to movement and we're gonna multiply that runner dot delta sign.
great. Now let's go back to Unity. Let's check our player and I'm gonna set 5 for Jump Force. I think 5 is okay. Now let's check the game. Now let's press on the space key. Now our player jumps, but there's a one small issue. It continues to jumping. The reason is because our jumping boolean is always equal to true after we press the space key. It doesn't go back to false. So that's why it just continues to jump. So how we can solve that problem? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write else. But that means if we are not on the ground, then jumping boolean is equal to false. Now let's check it again and let's see what happens. Yes, now our jump system works fine. Perfect. And what I realized, actually, we have a little bit bad view, so I'm gonna change position and rotation of our camera. Now I think it looks nice. Now, the final step is to build our game and test, test that our multiplayer system really works or not. Now, I'm gonna go to desktop and I'm gonna select this folder. All right, now it tells me desktop shouldn't be a directory. Then let's create a folder inside of desktop and add this game inside of that folder. I'm going to call this folder YouTube multiplayer. And let's select the folder and let's select the save. Yes, our game is ready. Now let's open. Now let's click on Start Shared Client. Now let's open the game second time. Yes, and as you can see, we can join the server with other player. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. If you want to learn more about Photon Fusion and how to make a multiplayer games, then please guys, don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button. If I get more likes than I get as usual, I will make the second video about that again. Face in your face.